like a phoenix. <laughs> The S&P rises. I, literally, we just started the show. Zach goes, I want to do it right. I want to start the show over because I didn't have the right – he didn't have the right graphics up on the screen. That's true. And Because I started off with my first words were bomb cyclone because that's what we were talking about, which is it's a snow bomb, Danny. They're literally going to drop snow bombs and snow grenades on the East Coast. They're doing it right now. It's an invasion of snow. Bomb cyclone. That's I'm, what you I'm call per, it up I'm there? Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's a – no, it's a Weather Channel thing. Bomb cycle. I'm like a progressive. We just call it a blizzard. No, by the way, I am a living progressive commercial. Like, you know, the ones where say you like your parents. I, I was watching the weather from some other state the other night on television. I looked at time. I'm like, I am a living progressive commercial. Like, why do I care about the weather anywhere else? Hmm. Like, I don't know. Literally, I was having that thought. No, but you but, like your parents, right? I love my parents. Okay. I, I'm a, I text my mom and dad. I don't every think day. those are progressive commercials. No, those are progressive. Are they not progressive? I don't think. I, the last progressive the commercial I saw, she goes and yeah, sees her, one, sis, her sister, and her sister's like in a mansion and real standoff. No, yeah, that, that, no it's progressive. It's yeah. progressive, yeah, where it's the guy and he's leading uh, people my age, like, don't become your parents. That's progressive. I'm so pretty that, sure it's that progressive. Is? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know look, the commercial you're look talking look about. At, look at nighttime. Fun. Television's my yeah, baby. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, okay, it is progressive. Yeah. So they've got two, uh, they've got so two I, angles going on. There. I got a couple right. of things here. Uh, I think the markets are bottoming, and I want to get to that, okay? But uh, before we do that, and I've got some factual things to look at, not just. I got one factual. Not just one. feelings and emotions? Bomb Cyclone. <laughs> um <laughs> So, but funny. I think are two dangerous words yeah. when you talk about the markets. You can't think. No. You just got to follow the charts. So um, I've got some things. The market. It appears that the market's bottoming. I think they're going to. We'll see how they finish. We're taping this. It's ten twenty central uh, on a Friday morning. So I, 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 my thought is that they finish up and then we rally into the end of the month, which is just early next week. And so we'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, but. What's really interesting to me here, and Zach, uh, let's go to the screens here, lickety split. And, you know, like last night, Hood, Hood reported, and it got me thinking on a train of thought. Um, in football, right? It got like I, I'm watching uh, Robin Hood report, and you can see how well Robin Hood went today. Now it's up on the day. Um, and it got me thinking about football. And, and follow me here. And I typically don't do this with the show. Some people are going to call me a hypocrite. Maybe you, Daniel, where I try not to be uh, exclusionary with the show. Like, uh, look, I get it. We're four. Are we four dudes? Five? How many dudes are on the show now? The one, two, three. I'm counting. Five if you count Zach. Six. Five? Zach. Six. 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 No, there's six. 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 There's six. Like, it's six dudes, right? <laughs> like, that's enough dudes. And, like, there's no, there's no representation from the female perspective on this show. And I try not to make it dude-centric because we have a, a, a lot of female investors and traders that watch the show. Yes. And I try not to, like, you know. You want to be inclusive. Yes. Yes. That, that's what I'm trying to say. And so I don't do sports analogies uh, a lot. Like, I don't talk like. Wow. You say, are you saying women can't like sports? No. Wow, man. That's what it sounded like. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I'm saying. Sorry, threw you under the bus oh, there, buddy. No, that's all right. I, 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 Danny, Danny likes Danny, and Danny likes to make Danny look good. There I gave, you go. Gave, gave there you opportunity. Go. I don't know if everybody likes football. Now, I do a lot of coffee talk, and if you don't like coffee, screw you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Find another show. Yeah, yeah. find another show. But uh, I got me thinking about uh, football and the intricacies of football. And there's a bunch of stocks that made me do it. So I, once I saw a hood report, then I wanted to see uh, DKNG, DraftKings, like this thing is just I mean we're in the, we're we're about to go into the thick of betting season it's it's it, it this is the Super Bowl season for betting where you've got playoffs for football you've got March madness just a month away this is where and and sports books are making a ton of money so you would think this is where they'd be wrap, yeah, wrapping up yeah yeah absolutely and like and well, well we the can, big question is that they get too when all the hype and all the the mergers right. happened and stuff it got all exciting and, did they run too far then? Right. And we can even look here at General Motors. General Motors is, you know, not like Robin Hood, but certainly, uh, I think last quarter, now somebody can look this up for me. I think last quarter they only sold 23 electric vehicles. But remember, I they're, they're be right. 23. Like uh, I'm, I'm not Tesla being, sells that in one lot in uh, three days. No, no, no. <laughs> Tesla sells that in a minute. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure, somebody looked that up. I read that online and I didn't go verify it. Uh, I think that's accurate. It's 23, 24. I remember seeing the same. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah. 
Hunter and I, uh, we tropes in the same neighborhoods. So, okay, you saw it. Uh, tropes? Yeah. Tropes? 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 tropes. Anyway. Um, so, but it got me thinking about, uh, specifically, I mean, we witnessed last, week, last Saturday and Sunday the best weekend of professional football in the history of the universe. There will That's never, true. I mean, yeah. it was. Because the Eagles won in it or what? Wow, I'm sorry. Uh, were, were you and Dak <laughs> together getting yeah, yeah. Derek wasn't your sleep there. Numbers? Dallas wasn't there either. Yeah, so. yeah. Fancy meeting you here, Dak, at the Kroger. Um, <laughs> so it got me thinking about um, just what the Los Angeles Rams and the Kansas City Chiefs have done, and it got me thinking about stocks. And everybody has this problem. Uh, here, I've got a couple. Like, let's look at Shopify. I love Shopify. I, I, I mean, but look at this chart of Shopify, 1762 down to 780. That's br- and by the way, they are the e-commerce platform. If they decided to take on Amazon and allow and, and, and switch up their model, which they won't do, they, they, would, they would be a direct, the direct competitor. Give, give them a run for the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Because there's a lot of, there is a lot of fluff. It's a nice way to put it on Amazon. Like, you're not getting the best prices. Amazon relies on third-party sellers, third-party sellers with fake reviews. There is a lot of things. There are a lot of issues with the Amazon platform. It doesn't stop me from ordering from it. It just means you've got to know that there's a lot of, uh, yep. lot of issues with the Amazon platform. Yep. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. My wife returns about a third of the stuff she gets. Well, at least. well you, at can't, least. you can't try it on until you get it, right? And right. Then, yeah, yeah. So, but it got me thinking about uh, Matt Stafford and uh, Patrick Mahomes. And I want you to think about what happened in the last several years. Last, uh, the, his rookie season, Patrick Mahomes' rookie season, he sat on the bench and he watched uh, Alex Smith play quarterback. And they got to the playoffs. And the, the Chiefs were a good football team. But that season ended. And they could not get rid of Alex Smith quick enough. And it's not because Alex Smith is a bad player. It's not because Alex Smith is a bad person. It was potential. They, the, the Chiefs and Andy Reid, they knew what they had sitting on the no, bench. Mahomes was awesome. And, oh, in practice. Awesome. They were watching him in practice, right? And, and I want you to think about the Rams. And the Rams, they had, uh, they had a quarterback in golf who got them, well, I don't know if he got them per se to a Super Bowl, but he was part of a Super Bowl team, right? Mm-hmm. And, they, and they moved off of him the, the moment. That uh, who's the coach uh, out in uh, Los Angeles? Somebody? McVay. McVay. Okay. As soon as McVay could get his butt to Cabo and meet up with Matthew Stafford, which is what happened, they they just saw each other in Cabo, and they just they decided to talk about philosophy and football. And before you know it, Goff is headed to a trade to the Detroit Lions. They trade away like three first round picks. They get Stafford in return, and it's not like Goff was this horrible human being. Playoff experience. Quarterback, great, you know, not not horrible. Like there's teams with much worse quarterbacks. Have you seen the Saints? And so, so someone wants to throw in. Have you seen the Eagles? Listen, <laughs> we are a team on the rise. <laughs> but well, there's nowhere to go but up. But go ahead. That's right. <sighs> We're an oversold market. <laughs> Sometimes over. I, I, I think Stafford went to Allen here, didn't he? I, I, it doesn't matter. Danny, we're a global show. Okay, nobody knows where Allen, Texas is. I just is. met it, it was the football team. I did. High school. Hunter knows. I don't know. Hunter, it's a powerhouse. Stop helping him. I, I only know because of football recruits that have come from Allen. Oh, it's stop. a huge. Most people you got to see their annoyed. stadium. It's bigger than most colleges. So, but think about this. These, these top-tier coaches, Sean McVay, Andy Reid, they, they need to get to the next gear. They need a quarterback that can score in 13 seconds, right? And they're looking, and they look at Alex. Andy Reid looks at Alex Smith and goes, this guy's a great quarterback, but he's not going to get us to the Super Bowl. He's not going to get us to where I want to be. Ships him off to Washington. Couldn't get him out of Kansas City fast enough. Once again, the Rams are on the cusp of the Super Bowl because they brought in who? Matt Stafford. And I really think the correlation is stuck. (laughs) <laughs> and I really think there's a correlation here to stocks. Whereas you are sitting at home. I don't know. The, like the longtime viewers, the, the stock nerds, I'm not sure you're doing this. 
But I know you have people that will tell you when you bring up Hood, they're going to tell you all the traders they have, all the business they have. When you bring up Shopify, and I, by the way, I could, by the way, when you put in Hood Shop, it looks to me because I'm a little dyslexic, Shop in the Hood. Uh, it, it just crowded the ticker symbol there. Shop in the Hood. Shop in the Hood. And so when you look at Shop, and I love the Shopify platform. Like I real, I could I could be um, uh, an evangelist for the Shopify platform. This is not a worthy stock. Got to separate the business from the price, stock price. Danny, if I asked you what my favorite stock is, you might go Chipotle. I talk about Chipotle Ooh, as as if, as if that's where Jesus would get his last meal, but we all know that's not true. If Jesus could do the Last Supper over again, he'd have create it, his own. Well, no, he'd have it catered by Mr. Taco Number Two <laughs> in San Marcos, California, and so he'd outsource it. And so, and, and so there's people at home that it's not just sitting on, like, like Hood is an extreme example. It's sitting on story stuff, Shopify, Chipotle. By the way, what's, what's my other well, one? Well, you know, that's the same thing with Bitcoin. People well, yeah. fall in love with a story. Right. Look at, look at restoration hardware. I, how many times did I tell you I love restoration hardware? In the past, a lot of times. A lot of times. Look at this. This, this stock is like air supply. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. Australian group. And so maybe I should have quarantined that. <laughs> that the quarantining things now? Or pick ACDC, a real Australian group. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that brought Don out of the shadows. <laughs> so... I, I think if you if, just think how cutthroat the NFL is, and I know there's a lot of things that are cutthroat, <clears throat> but to to move off of like look at what the Eagles did, uh, a little bit more different with Carson Wentz, but they you've got people like Aaron Rodgers. I think the Packers are gonna well Aaron Rodgers will move off the Packers. Maybe the Packers will move off Aaron Rodgers. They're just gonna move them if they have the opportunity to trade them. I think they're gonna trade them. And you, you got to go out and get better. You have to somehow find a way to go out and get better. And if you have restoration hardware, I, this is not because you know, Stockner's, what we do here is for edification purposes only. Never ever to be misconstrued advice. One of these advice you give us all you have to do is give us call 855 real well. Now, with that out of the way, if you're sitting on these, there comes a point where you say, too late to sell, right? And only, look, just like only you can prevent forest fires at home, only you can make that decision. But we talk about all the sell triggers in, you know, previous shows in the past. Mm -hmm. But to think that, I mean, what was, Hood shot, somebody ringed, rang, ringed, rang, rang, rang the bell, rang the bell. Rung the bell. Don, 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 Don we need Rung the bell. Rung, did, did they, ring, they, well, they ringed, ring, ring. Rang, stuff. it's not, rang. ringed it. Let's go with ringed, ringed it. Ringed it. Ringed it. Ringed it. I don't know. I, I don't we, need, we need to go to a higher source for that. Gee, ringed, ringed it. Ringed it. Let's ask Meryl. God almighty. Oh I don't gosh. think anyone ever would. would, it, would like, right. we, need a, we need a replay right. review officer for Don. That's the first time I disagreed I, with Don and Grandma. I don't think ringed that, it. That was, that was extreme sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think was, oh, there we go. He was good at that. He pulled that up pretty well, that's, good. Well, I don't, I don't perceive sarcasm at all. Don, so Don you, just rung our bell. Is it wrong? It can't be wrong. <laughs> no. I don't think ringed. it's wrong. It's, it's, I can't be ringed. Don't, don't listen to the producer. What are you ah, ringed, ring, ring my yeah, bell. Yeah. Well, listen, somebody. <laughs> rang, rang so, the bell. Rang the bell. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> somebody bought an 85. Somebody believed in Robin Hood at 85. And, and here it is, trading at 12. Ooh. And, 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 and so. <laughs> That's a pretty big loss. Listen, a, cyn a cynical person might say, well, Tim, it'll come back. Well, like they, they got the story. But I think if like I more so now it's crystallined, crystallined, crystallized. OK, crystallized <laughs> in my mind. I don't know what high, what school he went. To. Not Alan crystallized <laughs> in my mind. That's a football school. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind that you, you you could you think you have the best merchandise don't ever be afraid to move off of it and the courage of sean mcveigh and the courage of andy reed 
to him because do you know what the Saints would have done for a quarterback like do you know this I year? I got it. So that's your analogy. When when you think you can, you got to move on. You got to not get yeah. married to a story and keep going. You you could you I think was just you, helping? I was putting my Tim Turpeter on and help you tie that. Together. Bring out the head. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> bring out the head. Break out the head. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, yes. You lost his train of thought. I know. I'm not gonna <laughs> well, it's off. because Zach's got a special surprise. <laughs> okay. I got, but, I got a thing I'm working on for the but show. It, my, no, my it's, it's a little bit yeah. more than that because it, it does take courage. Like, I, Tesla is amazing merchandise. It, 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 you know what? The Jaguars had the exact same opportunity after going to the AFC Championship game, and they stuck with Blake Bortle. They extended his contract, and they haven't won six games in a season since then. Yeah. Meanwhile, they passed on guys like Lamar Jackson in the draft. You're exactly right, Tim. You got to recognize when you need to improve, and it takes bold steps. And there's it, there's not a lot of people. That it's can the do hardest it. thing to do. Upgrade, do, do, upgrade, no, baby. No, yeah, hold on though. I know you want to make the joke, but it, honest, honest to God, what Don just said there is is it's 100 percent true. Like these these are human beings, right? And so I tend to have a little bit more empathy towards it, like because I don't look at them as as, as pieces to a puzzle. But that's what you got to do. But stock's just a trading chip. Exactly. Stock is just a trading you, chip. Exactly. Like, and people like to, I don't know about romanticize it, but like when you, when you do buy a stock, you own a piece of the business. Right. I, I, I'm almost starting to think that it's factually true. I think it's the wrong way to look at it. Well, yeah. Look, look, in a good primary uptrend, when you're in an uptrend, then you want to try to pick the leading stocks, the best of the best. And, and a lot of times... Those are going to be the story stocks if that story's intact and the people are buying into it. They're buying it because of that story. But when you get in a correction or a pullback, whatever you want to call it, semantics, all these st- all these stocks sell off, and you got to. You, you I, I'm going to disagree defensive. with you just for a second because what Don's saying is, a, is subtly it's subtle, it's okay. subtly different, and what I'm saying is subtly different. The Jaguars were in an uptrend. The Chiefs were in an uptrend. The Rams were in an uptrend. And they still Cardinals. upgraded. That's the best example. Yeah. Kyler Murray. Card- the Cardinals the moved hell? off of, uh, who was the quarterback from UCLA? They're like, get out of here. Josh Rosen. Uh, yes. Rosen. They, they yeah. couldn't send him on a bus to Miami quick yeah. enough. <laughs> and, and, and the whole thing with the Dolphins, speaking of the Dolphins, they, they, they like, uh, I believe the issue with Brian Flores getting fired is he, he's like, two is not it. This, is, this yep. guy's not going to get us to where we need to be. I have an opportunity to go get a piece of the puzzle. We're, we're, we're potentially going to be in an uptrend. And then they got mired in the muck. Well, like, it's like net. Look at net was like the high flying best stock. And that went from 215. Now it's down to 70, I think. Yeah. I saw, that's so, a good example. Danny, I give you credit here for helping me shape this a little bit better. It's not just an up. When you're in an uptrend and things are going great, look to upgrade. You, okay, okay. you got to look enough, to up, Fair enough. You've got to look to upgrade because, and I think Belichick's great at this. Andy Reid is clearly great at this. Sean McVay is clearly great at this. And you watch. Uh, who is the coach? Um, and Revere Asset is great at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the coach of the 49ers? Uh, Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. You watch what happens with Jimmy G. Now, if Jimmy G goes, takes him to the Super Bowl, it'll be super interesting. But if, they, if the 49ers are to lose this game, there's a chance that they move <clears throat> off of Jimmy G. Probably go get Aaron. Yeah, I would imagine there's uh, well, big interest from 49ers and the Broncos. Yeah, yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Could, yeah, like mm-hmm. they're they'll Aaron lose. Gosh, from the be, could, could you like the it's Niners and, would be nasty? And it's the exact Oof. situation that Don just said. They, Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator of the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, when the Jaguars were a quarter away from beating the Patriots, one quarter it was Eagles Super Bowl year, quarter away from beating the Patriots, and that was all Nathaniel Hackett's coaching of Blake Bortles. Look at what coaching does. That's why people listen to the show because it's great coaching. Yeah, I'll work that in there. there you go. Thanks, eight five five for the wealth. Now, now Nathaniel Hackett leaves and he goes to the Packers, and the Packers are great, and they've got the Aaron Rodgers as a distraction, but he's great. So they piece it together. But the moment they they play a team in the Forty ers they 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 bounce. By the way, Nick Foles better better playoff Super Bowl quarterback than who? Aaron Rodgers. You have you cannot be afraid to upgrade. It is it is cutthroat. It is uncomfortable. I think there's people who could you could say that uh, you could look at aspects of your life, and when they're not working out, 
maybe an upgrade is uh, you need to upgrade and I'll just leave it at that. It is the hardest thing to do. It's easy to, like uh, we used to say in the Marine Corps, you know, don't be the person to go along to get along. Like you got you to gotta constantly find improvement, police yourselves and find improvement. And, like the debriefs were brutal. Like the debriefs after a flight, like we had a great flight. What the, and you're just getting, boom, like bomb cyclones dropped on you. Like, you, I don't like the way you breathe. Your microphone calls suck. Like, like everything. Yeah. You didn't plug in your seatbelt fast enough. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like just, every little like, thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you, and you know, sometimes you're like, dude, I, I, I'm going to need a drink to hear the rest of this. <laughs> well, but, but it, it, it's just that constant improvement. And I mean, look at what happened to the saints. They have one of the best coaches in the league. And this, the moment the saints don't have a quarterback, they just literally fell apart and they were still hanging around because they have good coaching. And, and, and so, I think that's the, 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 the that is so analogous, 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 thank analogous. you, analogous, oh boy, we have, we have really hurt the first time this segment, we, we have not, we, we, <laughs> looking for friends here, buddy, um, I think there's so a mouse in your pocket, yeah, right, it does, does he know how to spell and talk, because <laughs> I could use that mouse, is, is Webster Miriam a mouse, yeah. um, but I think the analogy to constantly upgrade and improve needs to be there. And I think it's so prevalent, especially right now with the NFL playoffs going on. Moving on. Segwaying. Connecticut School of Broadcasting. What I want to say here, why, why could the markets be bottoms? Okay? I want to look at this in a, um, in a little fact-based way. So real quick, let's do the tip. Okay? Uh, to your CK. And an, an analogy-wise, right, uh, I will stall with this while I get my chart arranged. <laughs> Both bulls and bears are frustrated. And someone's going to say, I'm, I'm sorry, Tim, bears are frustrated? Bears have had their way. No, bears are frustrated, and I'll explain here. You know what? Matter of fact, let me explain now with, before I go to the tick. So look at the spy here. Let's look at the SP, S&P. And so I'm on a daily chart here. Look at this. The market's bad. Like, like nay, I, there's people that can name everything wrong with the economy right now. Not to mention war drums in Ukraine. We're going to war. And you still can't take out Monday's low? When I hear bears complaining, <laughs> along with bulls, the market now is officially in that state of mind where it's wearing both sides out. Okay? And this was, this, this was a, um, a Bill O'Neill thing. I didn't pick this up. I, I, this isn't something I you just... You can't take credit for it. Not even close. Bill used to say, you know, when they're both sides are wearing out, that's when the market does what, at least what you expect. And right now, bears are on the other side going, hell and damnation, bomb cyclone to the economy. And bulls are just like, for the love of God, can we get longer than a two-minute rally in the market? I'd like mm -hmm. to buy some stocks. And, and nobody's happy. And when nobody's happy, that is when the market has the opportunity to do one of two things. Simply, and this is, a, look, until proven otherwise, I'm going to tell you, I think the market is just going to revert to the mean. We have to clear the 8 EMA. But does that mean the mean comes down to price because it continues to go down, or does that mean the price comes up to the mean? It could. It could. It could I mean, either, either way is possible. Either way is possible. I think you're ha you have that already, by the way. What you described has been happening. and. Like where today now, the S&Ps are up almost a percent. They're up nine-tenths of a percent. Overnight, they were down six-tenths, seven-tenths of a percent. Like, this market is now officially in wear them out on both sides. And when you get to wear them out on both sides, you, you, you just want to be nimble. You want to have your oh, watch. yeah, absolutely. You want to have your watch list tuned and ready. Because I'm just going to tell you right now, a, uh, what is this? Let me just get my markers off here. We're at 43.59. It's a big if, by the way. If we would come up to 45.21, it's a big move. Tim, I don't speak s and I'll speak Dow points. Okay, great. Every s and point is equivalent to about eight Dow points. You can do the math. This is about a thousand point rally in the NASDAQ if it were, if, it, if, if, if it were to occur. Today's the start. Okay. There's also something here where we not taking out this low. Is, is a pretty big deal to, <laughs> to a rally, okay? 
But there's also something that's very telling in the tip. And so let me go back to this. So, this is not on every platform, okay? And let me, uh, I want to show you Monday's tip. Here, okay, this is Monday. Monday was no good, dirty, rotten day in the market, okay? Minus seven. All I see is a string of Christmas lights. What, 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 is, what is that on, on the screen? That's the, the, the tick bars. So the, the NYSE, excuse me, the tick is a representation of all the buys and all the sells uh, numbered right off the New York Stock. That's what you're looking at. Minus 1758 is, is margin call. It's, 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 it's somebody getting blown out. And it's like, who's getting blown out? Somebody at Fidelity? No. No. It's, it's, it's hedge fund. It, it's, it's not these big, it's not Kathy Wood. It's, it's hedge fund. And so, and Kathy Wood runs an ETF. But, but you, but I. It's hedge funds that own Kathy Wood's ETF. <laughs> yes. As, as Ed McMahon. And leverage it up. Yeah, as Ed McMahon used to say, you're correct, sir. You know what? If we could get Danny's head, Johnny Carson's body, and then, yep. Ed, yeah, we could okay. do that. I could be a thumbnail. Yeah, we can do that. That's doable. Yeah. Johnny Carson's Just head. as long as it's not Jim McMahon. Okay. Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon. You know what? Ed McMahon. You know what? Put, put both. Ed McMahon. You know no, what? we're not doing that. Hold Keep on going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep <laughs> going. One second. If you could put three McMahons on the couch, Ed, Jim, um, oh, uh, and the guy who runs the WWE. Who's that? Vince McMahon. Vince, Vince. McMahon. Yes. Right. Three McMahons and Danny. The monkeys. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Yeah. I'll make that up. The happen. fact that I can name other McMahons than Ed. A couple. Right? Yeah. I like the Johnny Carson thing. That's not a bad idea. No, no. You're, you're Johnny Carson and there's oh, three. Oh, I Mc... see. I Gosh. Uh, they're, they're the guests. They're the guests. Oh, I got it. I oh, got I got it. Oh, yeah. I got yes. It. I got it. Yes. All right. Danny with Johnny Carson's head. And then three the three Mc... McMahons on the couch. The, like the proper McMahons, or should yeah. I be slapping Alex and Hunter on there, too? I mean, no, maybe. proper McMahons. Okay, right. Yeah, well, maybe, they're, bo to... maybe they're bodies. Because then you people know what, won't know out. who they are. You know what? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll get back to the ticks. Yeah, you we'll, figure it out. We'll get creative on I'll get hate mail. Yeah. Stick to the news, Tim. Back to the ticks. I get that. I get that email at least once a joke. It's never stopped you. No, never has. Yeah, never. I, I I cross the chasm every time I get that email. Just a little bit harder. You've got an audience because if you're the, if you're clinging on that tight, you think that one of us is going to give you the piece of information that's going to unlock your brain to make you the richest of the world. Then you're not paying attention to the show in its entirety. Oh. What we're saying here by by just running through the corpse of the cathedral of finance is saying you don't have to be locked in so tight. Like when you sit in this chair, there's no, you know, like we sit in a chair and then the, the handcuffs come on. You, you don't have to be locked in and I'm gripping like you're bearing down to pass the stool that will not come. Like you don't have to be that wound tight. You can be the funny Pepto-Bismol commercial. Upset stomach, diarrhea, indigestion, Pepto-Bismol. Oh, we may just have to edit that whole. Part. No, no, I don't. I don't think we do it all. No, I think that's great. Maybe Danny's cup could be a bottle of Pepto Bismol yeah. on the Johnny Carson. Desk. Right, I'll put that in his coffee there mug. You go. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so now look at these ticks over here. This is Wednesday. They come down to challenge these low ticks, and what happened on Wednesday was really interesting in the spine. It didn't close at the lows, like it didn't take out the lows. That's interesting. Like that's that's look. a little bit of support there. Like saying there's a chance, right? That's what it is. <laughs> and so it's like, well, that's something to build upon. And so what that stops you from doing isn't like a got my whole account on long. No, no, no. You, it stops you from potentially shorting the low. It stops you from like if you have a stock that's still being supported. You know, like it didn't hit your your risk. You have to always at home. I can't say this clear enough. Honor your stops, honor your plan, honor your risk. But if, it becomes, if, if this becomes emotional for you, which it becomes emotional for everybody at some point, understanding that we didn't take out the lows on those really nasty, no good, dirty down ticks on Wednesday is a really big deal. And then if you look at the tick picture on uh, Thursday, we don't take out these ticks, okay? It wasn't a great, 
I wouldn't call that a great close Thursday. Nope, nope, nope. And then Friday, right? Hey, Apple, Apple had a great quarter. We're going we're gonna to just take off. And the markets are up a percent. NASDAQ was up overnight a percent. And then Europe opened. And I know this because I'm watching. As I told you last week, I've taken over the TV in the middle of the night because I'm feeding Graham. And I'm watching, and they're like, German GDP is bad. French GDP is good. And so, by the way, the French economy has never expanded as much as it did this last quarter. But nobody cares. And, and nobody, honest to God, nobody cares about the German GDP right now either. They care about getting heat from Russia. And so all that's playing. And so, well, when you, you say stick to the plan, what if your plan includes leaving Blake Bortles at quarterback? Then you got a bad plan. Yeah. How do you know if your plan's bad? Well, then because you become, you, you jaguar it up. You're, you, you lose games. Yeah, you lose a bunch of games. You, you somehow I, either. I always, I always disagree with people saying, telling other people stick to your plan, do what's right for you. If your plan is a bad plan, you oh, better get I got, a what, I got plan. what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think, but I think people recognize that. Well, that's a great question, Don. I'm going to pause for a second. What if your plan's a bad plan? How do you know? Well, you know what? I, I, I would say call Danny, and I'm, being, I'm not I being I got physician. lots of calls this week, so I was there were say, some people I, with I, bad plans. I would call Danny, because uh, Danny will give you an unbiased, like, look, it, it might, Danny won't shill, and I mean that with all my heart. If you've got a good plan, Danny will do it. Just like everybody who... Like they, a lot of people call Danny for um, annuity help and life insurance help, and Danny gives you the straight scoop. We don't sell those products, and Danny just tells you like it is. Same thing if you have a plan uh, of stock holding. But if you can't figure, like I think most people can figure out if they have a bad plan because they're, it's just not working. And I'm not just talking not working in the short term. It's not working for the long term. And some people feel trapped by that. Or they can't sleep at night. Yeah, stuff like that. But I get a second opinion and or maybe even a third opinion, but I guess Don, you're right. Like, how do you, you know, like somebody stuck with Blake Bortles, not realizing, I, I don't know why Nathaniel Hackett left. I, I don't know the Jaguars as, as well, but Nathaniel Hackett left and Blake Bortles did not perform as well. By the way, Blake Bortles on the saints. Anyway. So uh, the ticks don't take out the tick lows from Thursday this morning. And it's like, okay, let's see what develops. I don't know how we close. But if this market, you know, takes out, you know, like a bunch of short covering, it doesn't matter. Like a, like a cynic, a bear cynic might say, it's just short covering, Tim. Look, price is price. And eventually, like, you know, cynical moves can lead. You, you can make a lot of money in cynical moves. And th the trick here isn't about, I don't think it's about making money. It's understanding where you are in time and space. And so if you have a little situational awareness to the markets, Okay, looking, I mean, you're up a percent. We've improved since I started talking in the S&Ps. Somebody shorted the bottom this morning. And, and if you could just see the tick picture developing, it can help you tremendously. And so, and I believe, like, that there's that cascade of emotion that comes over you where you just throw in the towel. Right? Like, the Eagles got sick of hearing Carson Wentz complain. And they're like, dude. You're going to Indianapolis, and Tim will buy all your cards. <laughs> you know, like, and then I hedged him with some Jalen Hurts cards. I'm not really sure how that's all going to turn out, but we'll see. What you know, um, you, you have, Don's point is really good, and I want to I make sure I, I, I consider this for a moment. Not consider it, but like I just really talk. Like if you don't know if you have a bad plan, look, the thing that makes us different than any other strip mall advisor in the world is that you can actually call us and you're not going to get pie chart talk. If you want pie chart talk and just buy and hold talk, and if you want talk that just makes you feel good about yourself while drinking a vanilla frappe, go to the strip mall advisor. Go get that. Well, I can teach you how to do a, a pie chart allocation in 10 minutes for free. You're just missing the point own. here. Okay. I just you don't hope. need the strip we're, mall advisor. Yeah, we're past that. No, no, yeah, just yeah. hold on. But if you want to hear the truth, not rudely, but like, if you have a bit, you need to hear, like, like when someone says, does this make me look fat? Sometimes you just, they really want to know. And so if your plan is making you look fat, well, you, gotta, you need someone to tell you, who, who will nicely tell you that loves you. You need to trim down. 
That that's well, that's a you great. You need to trim some stocks. Yes, that's <laughs> buy Revere. some other ones. That's Revere, and <laughs> Revere will tell you if you're fat. Pretty sure that's not the headline. Stop wearing those horizontal stripes. Let's oh, change go it vertical. To vertical. Solid, solid color. No, vertical what? stripes have made me look thin for years. I've got a, <laughs> I have got a sweater. It's not this one. It is a blue sweater, and it's not stripes, but it's got like the sew marks, like 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 panels almost. And even Tanya said, "Wow, that sweater really makes you look good." And I'm like, "It's the vertical striping." It lengthens you out. Makes oh my you, gosh. Makes you look longer. As a lifelong Husky boy, like in the Husky boy fan club. Yeah. Like, like how do you make fat people look thin? Like, that's like our topic discussion every week. Layers and lines, baby. Layers and you lines. You and Tanya? <laughs> no, no, Tanya's not fat. She's a I know I didn't mean that. I meant that's the discussion you and Tanya have. <laughs> Well, Tanya's not in the Husky Boy <laughs> Fat Club meetings. What are you trying to do? No, I meant talking about you. Never mind. You missed it. Never mind. No, the Husky Boy Fat Boy meetings are for... Oh, that's just for... D- Husky I Boys. You. I got right. you. I got you. What part of Tanya is in that? That's just a girl. <laughs> Only Husky Boys go there. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Like, and you got it. Sorry, Todd. Yeah, I kind you, of misunderstood you, what Tim you, was talking about. Yeah, and you, well, clearly. I thought you were just talking about the Fat Boy Club, not actually being in a meeting. No. Like, you, we, staff, we, so. like, like one of the couch, one of the tips that you do, like when you're sitting on a couch because your fat can gather, like when you're sitting on a couch, <laughs> always God. sit with a pillow. Tim, the, the people got to come. You can't just give away the secrets. Oh, they right? got to come to the meetings? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Attendance. I mean. Yeah, well, that we, we to get yeah. you, like, you know, like with email, because we use an email campaign, the Husky Boy Fat Club. Yeah. Like, that's like 10 tips to look thinner while sitting on a couch. Number one is always sit with a pillow. Yeah. Here, I'll demonstrate. So what you do is like if you've got a throw pillow on your couch, you never just want to sit like this. Like here, the opportunity to look fat is way too great. So what you want to do is you want to take that pillow and kind of just sit like this. Like <laughs> it looks natural. You can still reach your drink. It doesn't look natural. Yeah, thank you. And so what you're doing here, And now Tim uses the baby. He doesn't need the pillow. No, he no. just holds the baby the oh, whole yeah. time. Absolutely. I'll hold the baby, honey. Yeah, so what you want to do is you want to position yourself like you're sitting upright, but you're just holding that pillow. It doesn't look unnatural. That is a husky boy fat. That's number one. Like when you are part of the club, you like, hey, you got a good throw pillow? And then you want to, of course, with the throw pillow, like you said, Danny, solid stripes. I mean, solid, solid or stripes. Right. La- layers. Of pillows. Pillow, right. Layer yeah. that between you and the, yeah, the lens. Pillows so then... can make you look thin. Right. Thank you. Right. If you stand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we, ha- I think we did some good work here. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that. <laughs> I want to check your polling numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I talked the markets up. We're up 1.34%. What's well, that's because uh, Powell's in there buying after he made that game. What's Wednesday? NVIDIA doing? Nvi- I, I own one stock right now. It's NVIDIA. Uh, uh, I, by the way, the, I talked about this on Wednesday. I'll follow up with this. If I mention it, I want to make sure I follow up with the good and the bad. So uh, Wednesday, I want to go to a daily. I'm sorry. Uh, let's put in NVIDIA. Just as a follow-up. People... It's not fair. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to talk about a stock and then not follow up with her. Sorry, it's my charts. Up. Oh, this is off the two hundred day, and so it's still holding the two hundred day. And look, all I'm looking for, if, if we close below the Monday low, then I'm out. But if uh, see the two hundred day right here, the orange line, all I'm looking for is this to retrace with the markets. And so if mar- if big if if the markets retrace, uh, looking for two, we'll call it two fifty two sixty, the zone up there by the. Uh, if the markets fall apart, you know what that's going to do? It's going to drive the video lower, and so I don't want to be a part of that. So just as a, a brief follow-up but with that, I'll tell you what, Daniel. Let's go to Hunter. Yes, sir. Parlay extraordinaire. I got, I got uh, less, very little, actually, individual stocks today, and uh, more so statistics, because the reality is uh, there's not a ton of individual stocks that are setting up or at traditional or uh, just attractive, for that matter, buy points, uh, for the most part. There are some. We know energy has been incredibly strong, the whole sector. Uh, but I'm gonna, I've got a few stocks I want to cover. One that reported earnings today, and it was uh, one of the two names that was holding up, and then another that's on a big uh, weekly breakout, or even monthly. So 
first, Tim, I just I want to run through these statistics. I think you guys might get a kick out of uh, out of some of these because they are pretty mind blowing. So I just saw this one actually before I hopped on the show. As of this morning, the number of stocks in the Nasdaq down 50 percent or more from their high is greater than the peak of COVID 2020 crash. Mm-hmm. So right now, today, the number of stocks in the Nasdaq down more than 50 percent is greater than the COVID 2020 crash. Um, percentage of stocks down 50% or more, almost half. So half of the NASDAQ has been cut, uh, cut in half or more. So just I, those were mind blowing, especially the one uh, about the number of stocks down 50% or more being great than, or higher than the peak of the COVID crash. Um, so, you know, I know we're not here to preach doom and gloom, but these are just, I think, some, some metrics that actually give some insight into how bad it has been under the hood. I know we've talked about the indices holding up a well, the big tech, na- big tech names holding them up pretty good, excuse me. Uh, but some of the, the destruction under the hood is pretty striking. And so I mentioned about half of the NASDAQ was down 50% or more. That has only been higher in the great financial crisis and the tech bubble bursting back in 2000. So we're seeing some uh, some destruction within the indices that we really haven't seen to this extent in a while. Um, and then lastly here, the last bad stat, uh, this was from a couple of days ago, I guess maybe two days ago. Uh, it was the worst first 16 trading days uh, to start a year for the S&P 500 ever in the history of trading or uh, tracking SPX. So it's been a tough start to the year and a, a very volatile start to the year. And as I mentioned, there's not a ton of individual stocks setting up or looking all that great outside of oil. Um, but I do want to bring up two tickers right now, Tim. And I'm, uh, could you just go ahead and pull up Caterpillar for me? Oh, I was, I was Which, thinking you were going to mention team. I, I was taking a guess. <laughs> well, there's, we've got some, some earnings names that have had uh, bounces, but a lot like ServiceNow is one that was up oh, you know, 10, nice. 15%, but, but, but ServiceNow also, you know, down, down. 50% or so right. from the highs. So, <laughs> It's all you got to put it into it. into context. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, but okay, Caterpillar, yeah. uh, they reported. Yeah, so they reported earnings that. this morning. Oh, yep, gosh. reported this morning. They were up like four percent, five percent initially. Uh, now, obviously, not the case. Down six percent, and then their peer, John Deere, uh, not exactly the same, but very, very correlated. Still holding up okay, but also. Uh, has had some trouble recently, uh, just undercut those moving averages. So the point I want to make here is Caterpillar and Deer were two of those names that were hanging in there, showing big time relative strength since the start of the year. Uh, and then we see Caterpillar today kind of falling apart a little bit. John Deere still hanging in there, but they report earnings in a couple of weeks. So just wanted to give an update on those two. And then lastly, Tim, uh, if you can pull up HAL for me, I talked about this one a little bit. Uh, and I know we've talked about oil stocks in general. A good bit over the last couple of weeks because that's where the strength is. I mean, we, we've talked about the DVNs, the Exxons, the Chevrons, uh, but we haven't talked as much about oil and gas field services. And believe it or not, uh, this has been showing pretty significant relative strength, uh, not only versus the S&P, but even against some of the other uh, oil sectors too. And so you can see uh, HAL getting above that 20, let's see here, this exact number, that 27 level was a big deal. It came back and retested it right there, that test of the 21 that uh, Tim can see there where that arrow is pretty much. And then it has, it has right after earnings, which was that was into earnings, has held the move very, very well while the market has been extremely volatile. And that's the main point I wanted to make here on HAL is look at how this has traded this week, uh, especially compared to a lot of uh of other stocks out there and the market it's hanging it's hung in there really tight hadn't been super volatile uh and has traded really well so which is the case for a lot of energy that's i mean when you go through the relative strength new highs or the stand box uh it is dominated by energy at this point so i know that's not my normal information that i bring not a ton of individual stocks uh, but like i said not a ton out there that i feel comfortable bringing to you guys i really wanted to relay some of the the under the hood data that uh, that maybe most people aren't paying attention to. So that's all I got, Tim. Oh, I think it was great. And and I, while you were uh, talking, Hunter, I um I was wondering, there's got to be a correlation. Like when we get so many stocks under the X Y Z moving average, markets there is. Oh, okay. Markets start to find a bottom. I I I wonder what that is. It's, I, uh, I, so I actually I I, have, I don't know it off the top of my head yeah. right now, but. 
Uh, an easy one is percentage of stocks below the 200 day yeah. that during COVID got down to like 10, 15 percent. Great financial crisis down to like five to 10 percent. So basically, when you're looking at, say, the S&P or the NYSE, NASDAQ, whatever, when you get below 15 percent uh, above the 200 day, so 85 percent of stocks or, or more are, are below the oh. 200 day. That has been, uh, at least in the last 20 years, a good metric for a possible bottom starting to form. Yeah. Um, at least that's where it has been the, the last two big ones, COVID and, and the Great So do we know where we, at, we, we are now? Yeah, you said at the beginning. Uh, I, I want to say it's closer to like 25, 30% right now. I, I believe the stat I looked at this morning was uh, the 150-day simple. And I, if I'm not mistaken, that was closer to 30. So I would assume 200 is probably and, similar. And that, what what he's discussing is um, a secondary indicator. Mm -hmm. Just just like Mayan, what I, what, what I talked about at the beginning of the show where bulls and bears are both frustrated, that's not even an indicator. Like that doesn't even make the realm. Like Hunter did real work there. And like that's a real fact-based thing, but it's hard to, it, it's hard to like, act off of that one piece of information. And that's why I like to show people the ticks relative to where the indice is. Because the, the, the ticks have the power. Like, that's, that's the real people, the, the people that make the markets move. Yeah, in the short term, yeah. Yeah. Term. I, and, and all we're talking here is like, look, it, nothing we talk about is long term. Like, if, if someone says, I have a long term view on that Robin Hood. Oh, <laughs> okay. Like I, so what you're saying is you, you want to come back and 10 you know, years. I'm, like, no, nobody, <laughs> yeah. nobody ever says, you know, like, like I used to talk about this, just not, not pompously, but just philosophically, like, um, nobody says in a, in a, in a room full of investors, I'd like my money tied up where I can't get at it. And it's just sitting stagnant for the next 20 years. Do you got something that can do <laughs> yeah, that yeah. for me? Like nobody says that. Like if you can make 20, 25%, uh, you know, be, you know, like, the quickest you can make that amount is what you want to do and then move on. Like, like nobody, boy, I'd like to be in a trade that really just grinds my gears. You got something, you got a five year, five year uh, trade for me there, Tim. Nobody says that. Like, no, nobody takes a long term. Like, you know, if I could make 25% in five years or I can make 25% in five days, what, what, I think I'll take five years. I'm a little slow. Nobody. It's like you say, Danny. It's the same equivalent. Um, everyone's got a high risk tolerance when it's August of 2020, right? The markets are zooming. When the market's Tesla, going up, everybody yeah. wants in. When the market's going down, everybody's a wimp. You know, and I saw this in the journal, and I, I, I was going to bring it. I was going to, like, do a little feature on it. I'm not. Uh, it was, do seniors have too many stocks? You didn't see one feature like that in 2020. Like well, not, not every, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, when it's going up and, or 2021, do seniors have too many stocks? Do you have enough stocks? Yeah, no, <laughs> like, like you need more stocks. Like you, that was, you have too many bonds. That's yeah. been the whole devaluation of everything. Like this, like where, um, money's worth less. There's inflation. You need something to outpace, you know, like they just did the biggest increase to social security. And by the way, you were talking this morning on the morning call. Um, it was something about annuities, it, but, it, and you're, May I may I bring it up? Uh, I'll sure. take that as a yes. And so, <laughs> you're going to mark yes. this in case it needs to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have to cut Look this. at the timestamp. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. <laughs> so Danny, Danny was talking about the fiduciary relevancy of uh, people in this industry selling annuity, and it right away it just like and, and Danny's like I don't know what the game is here, um, but it, it, what I'm reading it looks like uh, the industry wants you to push. They want people to push more annuities. They want you to have this guaranteed income for life. And but there's a battle going on where like the regulators, it seems like according to Danny, want and you don't have to explain this. Okay, if I if I'm 90 percent right, just let it go. <laughs> it seems like the regulators want people to buy more annuities. That's a function of of uh, Congress's handlers, right? And so, but Danny goes, it's like they want them to have this guaranteed income and it makes annuities sound like nirvana. And, but there's a fiduciary thing here where they cost a ton and you're paying a trailer and they're often not the best products. And oh, by the way, they're not investments, they're insurance. And so there's a whole other side to this. And you could do the same thing in the markets as you could do an annuity for a hell of a lot less over time. And so there's the fiduciary balance. But then it just hit me while Danny was talking. 
Social Security was supposed to be the annuity. Yeah. And, yes. and what eventually will happen uh, in this brief moment in time as I'm driving my kids to daycare, listening to Danny talk, uh, it struck me that eventually if annuities become bigger, become just as big or close to as big as Social Security, and if Danny's right, that the regulators drive everybody to have annuities so we, the government doesn't have to worry about you, Congress will then come after that money sitting in annuities, and they'll governmentize, that's not a word, they'll deputize the money, and they'll start spending it just the way they've spent your Social Security that you've been paying in for. That's a side note. I now want to go to Alex. 855 Real okay. Wealth if you want more of that. <laughs> um, I think we're on track. We could have a follow-through day today. Um, Say what? Yeah, uh, I think we, we definitely could. We didn't break the lows um, from four days ago on the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. So if we do get some volume and it powers through, I'm looking for yesterday's highs. If we can get over that, that, that would help even more. But Here's the thing. I'm not making any predictions here. I don't know what's going to happen, but follow through days can fail. We've haven't really had that happen in a while. Um, I am also looking at some historical facts too. Like Hunter was pointing out every two years, there's a correction in the market in the last hundred years. And that's a 10% move down or more. And then 20% is a bear market. And that usually happens every six years. So if this is that, Two year mark since COVID, it kind of adds up math wise and statistically on the history of what's going on because everyone's getting bearish and, and trying to be flexible. Uh, we could just chop around this area and see volatility. For now, I'm going to nibble a little bit. I did buy in the tracking portfolio today, I bought ABBV. Um, I think that's one of the leading names in the market. It's at near all time highs. It's showed ex uh, extreme uh, accumulation. For like three weeks straight, it just ticked up and up and up, and then it just flagged to the right. Um, I really like to look at the chart. It held the 50-day um, setting up. So if we do have that follow-through day and the market breaks out, that's the name that I bought. Um, I also bought it for myself and my personal account too. So yeah, um, that's really all I'm looking at. There's like Hunter said, there's not a lot of names. So if you if you feel the uh, the urge to be a part of the market, just you know, nibble. Don't go. Don't go too big. Keep your size uh, smaller than you would, and you can always just try the index. Uh, it takes the guesswork out of trying to pick an individual name. So the S and P 500 uh, would be your your best bet over the others. I, I wouldn't mess around with the Russell 2000. Don't be buying the IWM. That's not. Um, th those names have been getting absolutely hammered. The small cap names. That's what IWM is. Um, MDY, same thing, the mid caps, stay away from that for now. Um, so stick with the uh, the big cap stock, S&P 500, NASDAQ type names. All right. Uh, or indexes, Don. excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alex, is that it? That's it. All right, man. Uh, Don. So we, uh, I, I highlighted uh, in the podcast last week and in the video last week, and, and by the way, the 21 over 21 will be making its reappearance uh, this week. Uh, in my video tonight that I do, uh, there are I, I could actually make a 21 over 21 list comprised completely of oil stocks, but that's <laughs> really not uh, what anybody wants to see. But there are some stocks uh, holding up, um, and I, I will have that as a watch list in tonight's video. As far as the overall outlook on the market, uh, I. We've been very clear at Revere in videos and on podcasts that once you break below the 200-day moving average on the S&P 500, risk picks up dramatically. And that's where we closed last Friday, below the 200-day moving average. So that uh, took us out of any index positions we had, uh, out of any uh, – we hadn't owned any individual stocks since the first week in January. So uh, last Friday and Monday, that took us completely flat. Since then, we've added two names, uh, actually three. We've took profits on one, NRGU, which just shot up. Energy stocks are the place to be right now. Um, that may or may not always be the same, but we, we had a three-day 25% profit. You just have to book that sometimes. We own CF, 
which is a fertilizer stock. Fertilizers and oils are, and transportation stocks, transportation shipping in particular, are what are holding up the best. Those are not your typical growth names. Your typical growth names are still working on forming the right sides of their bases as the index is correct. But the key takeaway is the fact that we are under this 200 day moving average on the S&P 500. And as I said, that's, that's where risk picks up. Um, from, from the high to the 200 day moving average was around 10%, which is a little bit less than historical norms. Normally you top about 12%. But on average in bear markets, you, you go down another 13% after that. And that's the pain that we're trying to avoid. It's a very simple yes, no decision. Are we under the 200 day moving average? Get the heck out of the way. Are we above the 200 day moving average? Fine, we'll start putting some index uh, positions back on and watching for leading growth stocks to uh, add some alpha to that, uh, to that recipe. But as for right now, any rallies, you can see that pink line that Tim just drew there. Every rally this week has been thwarted at the 200 day moving average. And everybody's looking at this level. Um, we may poke above it and then come right back down below it. Uh, but 44, 50, it's, it's, it's a slightly different level whether you're looking at a weekly chart or a daily chart, but anywhere from 44.30 to 44.50 is the key level on the S&P 500 that you want to get across before uh, you should consider um, adding a, any substantial exposure uh, to your portfolio. Uh, meanwhile, there are a couple of intermediate levels in there. 4,400 has served as uh, resistance uh, a little bit this week and also 44, sorry, 4,350, which we popped above right now. So. 4350 is just one of the short term levels that I'm watching, not really going to make any decisions based off of it. But the, the thing that uh, bulls do not want to see is a break of Monday's lows. Monday uh, yeah. has the characteristics of what you can consider to be a capitulation day, which is there was a, a massive wave of selling and we finished well off the bottom. And every attempt at sell offs, either overnight or during the day, this past week has held that low and that's a positive for the market. So the bulls aren't dead yet. Uh, maybe we just go sideways for a while and we're certainly willing to consider that situation. Uh, and then some, some decent stocks will continue to form the right sides of their bases. And we come back up with some strength through the 200 day moving average and we'll re-engage with the market. But until that happens, we're for the most part sitting on our hands. We've got uh, 90 90 percent cash, a couple of positions, uh, one inverse ETF. I mentioned CF and DVN. We also own GLD, which hasn't worked out the way I wanted it to. That might be cut uh, by the end of the day. That's just a, a failed breakout on gold. Tried to move out uh, on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and just uh, failed the last uh, three days. Uh, but it is near the bottom of the range, and I'm willing to give it uh, a little bit of room. Uh, this is really being, uh, gold's being held back by strength in the dollar. The dollar really popped. You show UUP, Tim. Uh, the dollar broke out after uh, Powell's press conference with the Fed on Wednesday. And that is uh, what's holding down precious metals. You can see that. So that's something we're keeping a close eye on also. So to bottom line it, 44.50. Uh, on the upside, on the S&P 500, that's the level that the bulls want you to get back across. The bulls absolutely do not want to see a break of uh, Monday's lows, and I believe that was 43.22, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 42.23, 42.23. So that's the level on the downside that would cause more concern. And right now we're just trapped in a range. Uh, we're monitoring everything. We're seeing some strength in uh, in some areas, but for the most part, any bounce in growth stocks, they can't even get above their 8 EMA for the most part, let alone the 21 EMA. So that's the first thing that we'll be looking for for signs of strength is are some uh, good growth stocks starting to get back above their 8 exponential moving average. I want to show um, uh, super Tim, interesting. Tim, can go you ahead. do me a favor? Yeah, go ahead. Can you pull pull up ZF, a dash Z, I mean, a... Uh, Excuse me, um, my my brain's drawing a blank. ZF like the five year Flash? treasury note. 
Yeah, slash. Like Cordell Stewart, slash. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you see how that's just on a massive decline since uh, <clears throat> right before COVID, it was on a massive rally. It's just deteriorated the last uh, two years. Then pull up uh, ZB, which is the 30-year bond, mm -hmm. treasury bond. Um, something I'm, I'm noticing here, this is a big level for the 30 year. And both times that this ticked down around this area, we had bottoms in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So February of 2021 last year, it did the same thing. It was around this area and the bond market is the biggest mar uh, market in the world. So um, also the 210 spread is starting, is starting to tighten and the yield curve is getting flat. So Something uh, macro-wise, I don't usually in the past I haven't really paid attention to. I'm starting to pay attention to because it obviously does affect uh, equities. Got it. Look at this when Don was talking about levels and S and P's. Look at this ATR here. Uh, go back to like uh, August, uh, September, September of uh, uh, 2021, and I'll lock it right there. Uh, this I'm gonna I'm gonna circle where I'm looking at so you guys can see it at home. I'm going to notice this 21 ATR is the uh, exponential moving average, okay? So we'll come off of that. I'll make sure I've got uh, in CX. So look at that level change, uh, 40, 50 points. Down. That was the range, okay? 50 points. Up here, uh, 9, 10, 31 points. Look at the range uh, Monday, 84 like the huge like, range. Yeah, the, the the ranges have expanded so much and that that's a that's a function of volatility and you kind of need that. That range expansion helps you find bottoms. Um Don's right, man. You you take out if we were to close really poorly today, Monday That'd you're going to see a bunch of margin margin net. It's, it's, well, you don't know that. That's a prediction. We could easily gap up too on Monday. I mean, you can't say that it's going to we're going to have uh, a massive yeah, gap it, down. It, it, well, if if so, if the market sold off today, probability wise, yeah, you would say yeah. that's a weak close. That's what happened and Monday. Right. And probability wise, it would be lower on Monday. There's no guarantee, and, and it and it could be an undercut and rally, and you finish at the could, high of the day. Be. Nobody really knows for sure. Yeah. Is the bottom line. What what happened? We've got on a plan. Friday. We're under the 200 day moving average. Risk is high, and we're sitting on yeah. our hands. I'll, I'll clear up my own statement. What happened on Friday of last week? It closed poorly, and then Monday you saw what Monday you saw this big spike. I know yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. if you close like that again today, I would. It doesn't have to happen, but I would expect something like that happens. Now, Daniel. If, well, well, oh, well, well, I'd like to say a couple make make a couple points on all this stuff we've been talking about. So Don mentioned we're like ninety percent cash. That's very unusual. We do that about every two, three years when you have a major sell-off. Like the last time was March, uh, uh, early March of 2020, when you had the COVID bear market. And we moved heavily to cash in, in big layers, 20, 40, 80, 60, 80, as the markets were going down. And we went down significantly less, single digit compared to the S&P. Uh, this year to date, we're down, you know, low single digit. And the s and is down high single digit. And, and the NASDAQ's down around 14, 13% as of yesterday's close, not, not today. Um, so there's times that you want to be very defensive, like Don said, when you're below the 200-day the moving average. But Tim's right that you may get an oversold. You, will, you, may, get, you may establish a bottom and, and resume a, a strong uptrend, or you could get an oversold bounce. One thing about bear markets, I'm not saying we're in a bear market. I don't know. It's too early to tell. But the strongest rally, Strongest short-term rallies always occur in bear markets. So it's possible we could get a rally, and then it rolls right back over and goes lower. So you've got to be nimble. And I think everybody said, Tim said that, Don said that, everybody said that. If it starts to rally, you can add some, a few index pieces and a few stock pieces, but you always got to have a plan both ways. you got to have a plan if it continues to rally higher, but you also have to plan if it, in case it rolls over and goes much lower. If you look at 2008 during the financial crisis, you had a massive sell-off, then you had a big rally, and then it rolled over and went 30% lower. It's like a double waterfall. So you just have to have a plan either way. <laughs> okay, I've got. Can I, I show you something? Let me, that let me I have a little post on my computer. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. 
No, no, it's fine. Go ahead. It's 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 nothing. What does the post-it say? You've got the entire world wondering. No, um, <laughs> all on, I all just on. have one post-it on my computer, and I've had this since I, like years ago, and it says, use stops. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and you know, and that's that segues into what what I was going to say. And, you know, somebody that was considering us and a, and a traditional advisor for coming on board and we're discussing things and, um, you know, we came to came to downside protection and the conversation that, you know, he had with the investors, I'm concerned, you know, going into retirement, bear markets, what happens? And the reply was, well, we can put you in, you know, some blue chip dividend stocks and, you know, generate some income off of that and, and lower your overall risk profile. And then the question was, okay, well, what did you do for your clients during COVID when the market lost 34% in five weeks? And, and their reply was, well, we stayed the course, uh, the market came back, and as you can see, we're higher now. So great, ask this question, and this is why we protect our clients' assets at Revere. You never know what's gonna happen. What if COVID had a four or a 5% death rate instead of 0.1%, 0.01%? What would the world look like right now if four out of every 100 people that contracted COVID were dying? Where would we be? There would certainly, some people will jokingly say, well, then we've got uh, more important things to worry about than our nest egg, but that's, that's a complete and total cop-out. You worked hard for your money. Your money deserves to be protected. Something as simple as the 200-day moving average protects your money. Don't say the market always goes up long term. People said that in Japan, and they topped in 1989 when Japan was the economic powerhouse of the world. The United States could top. We have, we have we're 20 trillion dollars in debt. Uh, nobody knows how this is going to resolve, and that's why we protect our clients to the downside because nobody knows how this is going to resolve. I, we're, 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 we're of the, um, but we do know that risk significantly picks up below the 200 day moving average. That's where we are right now. The market could bottom, could have bottomed on Monday for all we know. And if it did, we've got rules to get us back in and participate in the upside. But if it doesn't, we've got rules to protect, uh, the downside too. And, um, it seems like a common sense approach. I say it all the time. When your check engine soon light comes on in your car, you take it in for service. You don't ignore it. Under the 200-day moving average is a check engines is the check portfolio soon light on your finances. It's that simple, mm. and uh, that's the main rule that that guides us here. We know the difference between a healthy market and an unhealthy market. When the market's healthy, we're going to be in the best stocks and the best sectors, and when it's not, we're going to play it light or get out of the way the way we have. And that summarizes Revere versus other advisors in a couple of sentences. Well, also to your point though. A lot of people, so a lot of people, when they lost 35% in four weeks, five weeks, they freaked out and they sold out because they didn't know. And I've talked to a lot of people that, that didn't get back in and didn't participate in that big resurgence when the Fed said, okay, we're going to put a floor here and we're going to print $2 trillion of funny money. And they, and they created a rally because they didn't have rules to get back in. And so uh, it just makes it a smoother, easier ride so you can stay the course and in my opinion, it's a better strategy. Okay. I'll tell you. Well, also, if you lose 35% on your money, you know, it's not 35% to get even. Um, so if we lost, let's say, I think, what was the Revere? I wasn't Revere at the time. Was it like a what? A minus well, 7%? If you lose 25%, loss? you got to get 37 and a half to make it back. If you lose 50%, you got to lose 100, make 100% to get it back. Well, Compound well, and in the both 30, ways. Th so if you lose 35%, yeah. You're going to have to make somewhere around 60-ish. 60. 54%. Okay, 54% to get it back. That's yeah, the so that's the other thing, too, is that person that says, yeah, we got even, what Don was talking about. Okay, you got even, but meanwhile, the guy that was sitting in cash when the market started to turn up has more money to compound. Right. Um, if you were to take exactly. two even portfolios, it, it it's not the same because over time, the person that was active – and was following some rules is going to have more money in the end. That's just the bottom line. So we manage risk first and the returns take care. And that's yeah. the bottom line. We manage risk first and it's mm -hmm. easier, smooth. I feel like you should give that talk to mean Gene Okerlund. <laughs>
your mustache is crooked. That's the best line ever in an interview of an actor. You know, it'd be a good picture, Tim, for the uh, the our uh, the video is all of us in like a row, but all of us have our football like a jersey. Like I'd have the Cardinals. You could have you know the Eagles jersey. Hunter will have. Uh, we'll give Tim an Allen Allen jersey. Yeah, they're Allen, at, they're the Allen Eagles. Allen Eagles. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> that would be. A I'll good tell one. you what, Daniel. Listen, we got to end this thing. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I need you to do the really short. Like, don't don't tell them too much. Just get get do the closing. Well, if and, you're going to talk about it for ten minutes, I can do it right now, and you can save some time. You don't know how this bit works. Too, huh? no. Okay. Which is you part can of always the, do this 10 minute, two minute thing right. saying, do the short That's part of the joke. It's part of the running joke. I know, I know. And then I, <laughs> it's an appreciation of the comedy. And yeah. I think, yeah. you know, if, if you weren't here, Zach, so help me God. Elevate. Yeah. This, this might be Thunderdome. In here. No, no, no. Um, Bad back. Uh, that Tina Turner, right? One of her yeah, greatest. Yeah, beyond Thunderdome. Second one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was second. Ooh, yeah. Second one? Second. Um, and then I've got something for, I've got one thing for Hunter. A surprise okay. for Hunter. No. I'm afraid to ask. Oh, you should be. All right, folks, listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, just send them to revereasset.com. We won't spam them or reach it, spam them or reach out to them in any way. It's up to, up to them to reach out to us. And they'll uh, if they hit the subscribe button, they'll automatically get our, our daily market insight video newsletter, short, 10 minutes, hopefully. Uh, yeah, they can also will get this podcast in their inbox every Saturday morning once it's posted. They can email any of us at dan at revereasset.com, Don, Tim, Hunter, or Alex at revereasset.com. And you can always call us old school at 855-REAL-WEALTH. Oh, one last thing. Just This is the final thing. So, Hunter, I found the greatest video in the history of videos. Oh, no. I don't know if it'll play. Audio. No, it's paused. Thank you. It's... 10 I'm good. This will be in the YouTube show notes. Okay. okay. So, uh, 10 fast food hacks that will save you money. Just uh, on this is, this is the red meat that people right. want. Right. I know. Here. I know. I was going to put it in saving I, 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 I was just, that's because you and Tim eating fast food. Often. I was going to put it in the beginning, but then I thought people would get more upset at me than they normally do for trying to have <laughs> fun. Right. So, but the irony of this is, I want you to look at the fit people on. So the YouTube algorithm has served me up in your take. They must know I'm the fat boy. Like they must know I'm a chubby hubby. Like look at this best tools for. Uh, I don't know about this board meeting thing, but this is food, food, Hold on, food. Let me, you, you, let me see if I can zoom in on this. So like this is ridiculous. You're on the husky list. Yeah. yeah. Like like like. There's a known. There's a known. There's a known flyer list. Like you can't board an airplane if you're on this list at TSA. I, I'm pretty sure I'm on a known Husky list because YouTube's like, hey, fat boy alert. He's looking at fast food again. Maybe we can get him to take an exercise class. Do you know your body type? <laughs> yeah, it's Husky. I'm looking at fast food hacks in the middle of the night. Stupid. Cholesterol and blood pressure med ads are next. Yeah, right? <laughs> anyway, in the middle of this 10 fast food hacks is a Chipotle hack. It's the mm. best one. So I texted this to Tanya, not in the Husky Club. I texted this to Tanya, and she goes, oh, the Chipotle one was by far the best one. There's even a five guy. Can you guy. share it? Yeah, it'll be in the YouTube <laughs> it'll, it'll notes. The show notes. Yeah, yeah. He's a part of the show, right? Oh. Like, so you're just like, going to tell us. Come on, keep up. Keep no, up, no, Alex. No. Keep up. He listens to the just show. Well, just tell us. Look, if you're tell watching, us. Look, if you're watching at home, you can, you can see what channel we're looking at. You know what this is. Yeah, this is yeah. the deal guy. Okay. Yeah. So the deal, deal guy, guy, January 18th, 2022. Yeah. But. The Chipotle hack is amazing. But then Hunter, who went to Five Guys to mark the inflation, you know, like, hey, this is real inflation, man. At Five Guys, there's an inflation fighter in this video. Wow. wow. At, hmm. at Five Guys. Sorry, oh, hit man. the microphone. At it, Five Guys. At Five Guys. Two, which, that, that video has two million views. That's insane. That's because there's a lot of fat Because Five Guys is $20 now. That's yeah. Like, you you look, it. 10 days ago. Yeah. <laughs> 10 look, days, I'll, I'll give you a little tip. I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little. A little bit away here. There's a grilled cheese at uh, Chick Fil A. You can order it. It's off menu. Okay. Not worth it. One of the worst hacks. The Chipotle hack, uh, fantastic. And I, look, I'm not going to do the Five Guys hack, but have at it, folks. We'll talk to you next week on your money. <laughs>